Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. In this video, I want to talk more about the Hypershade. There's so much to talk about in the Hypershade. And I know we've talked a lot about the Hypershade recently, but I feel like there's so much to explore here. I wanted to keep going. So I'm going to go to the Panels menu, Panel, and choose Hypershade from the list to bring up my Hypershade window. I do have a docked viewport here so I can look at my scene through the Hypershade if I need to. And so what I wanted to talk about today was a simple utility called the Reverse Utility. Over here in the Create area of the Hypershade, I can click on the Utilities category. There's a whole bunch of them here, and I'm going to look at Reverse right here. Left click on that to create it, and it creates a Reverse Utility node. Now this utility is very simple. It's pretty straightforward, but I wanted to go over it and show it to you. So as an example scene, let me go ahead and go to File, Open, OK. So here I have a glass object, a glass uh, cup with a glass material applied to it. I'm using a relatively simple glass shader. It may look complicated just from looking at it if you're not very familiar with the Hypershade. But all I have going on are two ramps, each, reflect, each connected to transparency and reflectivity. And they're both using the sampler info nodes facing ratio to control them. Let me show you a render of what it looks like. Okay, so here's my glass rendered with Maya software. We're not using anything fancy. There's no Arnold happening here. It's just straight up uh, Maya software render with a blend material, a couple ramps applied to reflectivity and transparency. Again, using that sampler info node. And then I also have a very light noise applied to the bump of the glass, just so you can kind of see it there. The, the, instead of these uh, lines being straight across through here from the refraction of the floor, you can kind of see a bit of unevenness through there, and that's because of that bump map. If I zoom in, you can see a little bit better. So what I wanted to do was add some very obvious uh, dirt smudges, like fingerprints and uh, those kinds of things, to the glass. And I thought this was a really good opportunity to show how the reverse node can really help do that kind of thing. What I have here going to the transparency of the glass is this ramp. So right here we have these this ramp set up in this way and it, again it's using the facing ratio of the sampler info utility node. We do have a video going over the sampler info uh, utility node if you haven't seen it already. We talked about using facing ratio as well as flipped normal in that video. So with the facing ratio connected to this ramp what's happening with the glass let me bring back that render is that on the outer edges where the glass is curving away from the view of the camera the glass is getting less transparent it's not completely opaque but it's definitely not as transparent as the center of the glass and where it's mainly facing the camera it's entirely transparent with this white uh, color applied to transparency in that area so what I wanted to do was apply this fingerprint and smudges texture I have here to that ramp in this area of the transparency map. So what I'm going to do is with this white color selected with my ramp, I'm going to middle mouse click and drag this fingerprint and smudges texture onto the selected color like this. So what's going to happen though, if I keep this image and try, I'm just going to grab a section of the glass here and render this little area by clicking this render region button. So it's just going to render that one region of the glass now that I've applied that fingerprint and smudges texture to the transparency of the glass in that part of the ramp. And you can see as the render is working on it, this is not what I want. It's, it's like completely black. So with texture view turned on in my viewport by pressing the 6 key, let me click on this little S icon. Let me zoom in here on my fingerprint and smudges texture. I'm going to click on this little S icon. You can see now on my glass the way the smudges and the this stuff that we're seeing here in this image are as being displayed on the glass. But what's happening is the black of the fingerprint and smudges texture is making the glass opaque. And I want the glass where all the smudges are happening to, to be able to see the smudges but for all the black of the texture to actually be transparent. So this is a really great example of where the reverse node comes in handy. Let me unsolo that texture. So now what I'm going to do is click on reverse utility like this. 
So the out color of my fingerprint texture, I'm going to go into the input of my reverse. And then back to the ramp, I'm going to click on this black circle here so that I have that selected color. And I'm going to middle mouse click and drag the reverse node onto that. So now the output of this reverse node is going into the ramp at this color. So what I've done here is I've taken that texture of fingerprints and smudges as black and white. Again, I'll click on a solo button so you can see it. So the smudges and fingerprints are white, the background is all black. I, took, I plugged it into the reverse node's inputs, and then the output goes into the ramp where I had it before. So now let me go back to the render view here, and I'll just click and drag a box around the glass and render just it. There we go. So now you can see what happened as I zoom in here. My black and white fingerprint and smudges texture has been reversed. So where here, where everything is white, has now turned black, and where everything is black has turned white. And so when I plugged it into the transparency here, you can see that all that whiteness, or where here it shows black, all, everything that shows black here is being white, which means it's transparent, like the glass was to begin with. Everything here that's white has been reversed to be black, which is opaque. And so now I'm seeing all those little smudges and fingerprints and things because that part of the texture has become opaque due to the reversal of the two colors of black and white. So hopefully you can see how that's working out here. So I just applied the fingerprint texture into the input of the reverse and then the output of that I put into the ramp I'm using for transparency and then we got the final result. I can click on, click on this little S button again to unsolo that. And like always when using glass materials and such here in the in the viewport you're going to get you know a pretty inaccurate uh, representation of what that glass actually looks like. You have to actually render it to really see it in all of its glory. But that's using the reverse utility node this works for textures, it also works for just simple values. But it, it takes in an input and then it gives out the output it gives out is the reverse of that input. So in this case, a black and white image gets flipped or inverted. Any kind of numerical values will be reversed and so on. So the reverse node is very handy for that kind of thing. So that instead of having to go into Photoshop, for example, and all right, let me take this image into Photoshop. I'm going to invert it there, save it as a new texture, bring it into Maya and apply that instead of the one I had. I can just use this reverse node to fix to what I have for that purpose. And then if I wanted to use this fingerprint texture as it is here for something else, I can do that without having to have another version of the texture in my scene. This one is being reversed through here, but then I can apply the out color to something else. Like, uh, for example, specular color. And so that it's using that black and white image the way it was originally for the specular color, but that image has been flipped for transparency, that kind of thing. So the reverse node, very handy for using this kind of thing in the hypershade. Hope you look into it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if I missed anything or if you have any questions, and I will talk to you later.